Today we're going to talk about microwave oscillator design. We're going to look at a specific example of an in-gap HBT Mimic VCO centered around 5 gigahertz and we're going to be using a very specific in-gap HBT process designed for low phase noise applications. So we're going to look at the negative resistance approach to oscillator design. So we begin by designing a two port negative resistance circuit. So this is my first test bench. Uh, we see I have a two port negative resistance circuit here operating into a 50 ohm load. If I push into here, so we're going to be using a HBT. Uh, to begin with, we're going to do a linear design. We're going to use a set of measured S parameters at a specific bias point. In this case, VCE 3 volts, collector current to 12 milliamps. Eventually, when we move to non-linear, we're going to apply the uh, supply voltage here. So we include all our bias components, collector resistor, emitter resistor and choke, and a potential divider to set the base voltage. So we're going to look at a cold pits design, which uses series capacitive feedback uh, in the realms of a, a capacitive divider. Now we're going to use the integral base emitter capacitance of the device as one of the capacitors in our divider. So this is our second capacitor here, which is a MIM capacitor in the MIMIC process. Uh, so we call this CE1 uh, emitter capacitance. So that's our only variable really in this design. So we're going to start off by setting it to 75 micron square capacitor. We're going to press simulate. So what we get is uh, a negative resistance shape here. So if we look at mag S11 against frequency, then negative resistance is defined as uh, mag S11 being greater than 1. So what we see for 75 microns, it's well centered on the 5 gigahertz that we're interested in. Um, but it really doesn't matter too much because you can see we have a negative resistance over a massive range shown here by these two markers 1.7 to 10.6 gigahertz so you can't really go wrong but let's just tune give me these for a second let's just tune this capacitance and see what happens so if we go bigger the negative resistance just gets bigger at lower frequencies if we go smaller it gets uh, moved up in frequency but essentially for a very r wide range of capacitive value we almost can't go wrong um, and we end up with negative resistance plenty of negative resistance around 5 gigahertz. So we'll just close that. So negative resistance design finished with one variable. We then move on to our linear analysis. So here's the same 2 baud negative resistance circuit, 75 micron capacitor running into a 50 ohm load. And here's our resonator, which we'll talk about shortly. This gives us a closed loop oscillator, as I say, oscillating into its 50 ohm load. This transformer allows us to look into the circuit at the impedance without perturbing the circuit in any way. So let's have a quick look at the resonator. The resonator is a simple series LC resonator. So this is our L, which is a spiral inductor. Uh, this happens to be a five and a half turn uh, rectangular spiral, which has a uh, inductance of around 2.9, prime inductance of around 2.9 nanohenries. Our capacitor consists of uh, a varactor diode. We're using actual S parameters for each finger of the diode, uh, and we're using 10 of these uh, models in parallel to give us a, quite a big uh, capacitance for this frequency range. Again, eventually we'll be applying a tuning voltage here through this choke, uh, and all the other parasitic uh, transmission lines, etc., are included in this model. So, with the inductance set to 2.9. And Henry's, let's press simulate. So what we see is that if we look at the impedance, the imaginary part of the impedance uh, through our transformer, we see that the imaginary part goes through zero at 4.4 gigahertz. So this is our oscillation frequency, assuming that we have excess negative resistance. I think you can see that we do. Uh, look down at this table, we find that we have at least minus 38 ohms of excess negative resistance. So this real Z is the excess negative R, it's not the absolute value of negative resistance. Now we're going to move on to non-linear design for this oscillator, but it's very important to do this uh, linear design because essentially what you see is the imaginary part, shown blue here, actually goes through zero more than one time. Um, but at this frequency here we have plenty of excess negative resistance, at this frequency we have no negative resistance, in fact we have lots of positive resistance, so there's no danger of the circuit going off at these uh, incorrect frequencies. Let's just put the history on and sweep the reactor tuning voltage. To do this we'll just change the S parameters from the 0 volt measured data to the 5 volt reverse bias measured data. 
interest simulator and we'll see how the frequency at which the imagined part goes to zero has now moved up to about 5.2 gigs. Negative resistance hasn't really changed because that's fairly independent of the uh, resonator or termination. So let's move on now to look at a nonlinear design. So a nonlinear test bench, very similar. Two port negative resistance circuit is exactly the same as before, except that this time we replace the measured S parameters with a true nonlinear model. And again, if we push into here, we can see that the nonlinear model actually includes KF and AF values to allow us to accurately predict phase noise. And this time, being a nonlinear model, we actually apply the uh, correct 5 volt bias voltage. Again, the resonator, very similar to the small signal resonator. This time, we replace the measured S parameters for each of the diode fingers with a nonlinear diode model, the model of which is set here. And we actually apply the tuning voltage via a choke. So we also replace the ideal transformer now with the adjunct ADS OS port symbol, uh, which basically probes into our closed loop oscillator and looks for any potential frequencies of oscillation. So again, we run into a 50 ohm load and measure the voltage and current at the output. So with the tuning voltage set to zero, let's press sweep. What we get this time is the output spectrum. So this is what we'll hopefully measure later on the spectrum analyzer. We note that the start frequency is about 4.41 gigahertz, but this time we get the power. So we're going to be hoping for 10.76 dBm of power. And we also see the second and third harmonic content. Again, I'll put the history on. I'll tune the tuning voltage to five volts reverse bias. And we'll see how the frequency shifts over to 5.21 gigahertz and the power drops very slightly. What we can actually do is actually tune the uh, tuning voltage between 0 and 5 volts as a variable. So I'm going to sweep this. It takes a bit more time this because we're looking for phase noise uh, at each of these uh, tuning voltage frequencies. So we see here that how the spectrum moves with tuning voltage, but more importantly, we can have the tuning curve. So the blue curve here shows the oscillation frequency from 4.4 to 5.21. Not linear, but not too bad. Um, the power is shown here in red. So we see it's approximately 10 dBm, plus or minus half a dBm across the range. Just set it back to the fixed voltage of five volts at the moment and do another sweep. We can now actually look at simulating the phase noise. I'll just turn the history off. So what we're looking at here is simulated single sideband phase noise in dBc Per hertz against offset frequency from the carrier. Now the important thing is a rule of thumb really for these bipolar oscillators is that 100 kilohertz offset you should be achieving better than minus 100 uh, dBc per hertz. So this particular example is 4 dB better than that. It's predicting minus 104 dBc per hertz at 100 kilohertz offset. So we then look at the layout of the circuit. So here's here's the layout. So what we see here is the gallium arsenide in-gap HPT. Here is the fractal diode, so it's very big and all the different fingers. Here is our 2.9 nanohenry, 5.5 turn rectangular resonator inductor. Here is our 75 micron square MIM capacitor. The tightly packed round bigger spirals are the chokes. So this is where we apply V-tune to the reactor. This is where we apply VCC to the HPT. So we have in fact made and measured this oscillator. Here's a micro photograph of the finished product. Photographs quite nice in that you can see clearly the two levels of metallization in the process, gold being the top layer and pink being the uh, next layer down. Here's again the HPT and the reactor. So here is our measurement of the oscillator working at five volts tuning. This essentially gives us the 5.2 that we're particularly interested in for this application. So we notice that the frequency is exactly 5.2. Remember we predicted 5.21, so very close. The power level here is shown about 4.4 dBm. Now this oscillator is running into a 6 dB pad so that we don't get the frequency pulled by the load. So that's 10.4 dBm. 
very close to what we predicted. And the important thing in this job is the phase noise. So 100 kilohertz offset, we predicted minus 104. We're measuring minus 105. So very nice oscillator. And that concludes uh, this talk for today. Now we uh, have many more papers on oscillator design and also other microwave circuit design uh, on the Plexitech website, www.plexitechrfi.com.